and gentlemen, K Kim here with the Traders Club. Welcome to the market update. I uh, hope you guys had good week trading this week. Uh, we have a shortened week this week because um, tomorrow is um, is the uh, what is that? Um, tomorrow is the uh, Good Friday, so market is gonna be closed tomorrow. And I am recording this intraday, right? Today's Thursday, the eighteenth of April. And I am recording this intraday. As I record this video, uh, market has been opened for two hours. Two hours. So I am recording this in the morning time. Uh, as usual, let's continue with our uh, list here. Uh, we'll start with the Spider, uh, Diamond, Qs, Russell, Semi, and the Banks. And we'll call it a day. You should be seeing a little bit of flashing lights on your left as I recording this intraday. Uh, I am looking forward, forward to the uh, long um, holiday weekend. We have a three-day weekend. That's a good thing. And I know there are a lot of treasures. It gets really sad when the market is closed. And that's kind of what happens when you're like always chasing the market, right? You're, when you're always chasing, when you're always exhausted. And you know what I mean? You're, you're always like your whole life is evolved around the market. And it's like you can't. You can't like have your normal life, normal self when the market is not open. You know what I mean? Like market should be kind of a like a side thing. Doesn't mean like, I mean, I'm a full-time trader and investor and a lot of you guys are, are also, but market should always be kind of like, like your favorite sport, right? Like basketball, tennis or football. You know what I mean? Like something that you enjoy doing. You know what I mean? Like this shouldn't be something like, you shouldn't be completely like saturating the market. Your whole life evolves around the market. Like every single day, you you check the pre market, you you look at the market all day long, and then you check the post market, and then you do futures, and then you read everything you can get your hands on on CNBC, Yahoo Finance, or whatever it is that, and you go through all the tweets, and you follow every single people on the planet. That would destroy your life. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are probably a lot of people out there. I mean, as we get into this information age, there are plenty of information out there. The problem is the real good information gets choked out. Like about 90% of stuff that you read is all garbage. Especially same with the YouTube, everything you hear on TV. Everything you read on blogs, I mean, there are 90% of crap out there. There are lots of information now, and it's so much easy to grab that information. Another thing you should understand is just because certain article, certain things gets a lot of views or a lot of followings, right? A lot of certain, 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 certain individual, you know, let's say certain articles gets retweeted a lot. The market always fold the majority. Think about this. I want you to start thinking, right? Think about this. Market always fold the majority. So if you start following the majority, you're going to sure to lose money in the market. So if, if the majority think that the market is going to crash, the market is not going to crash. When the majority think the market is never going to start coming down, that's when the market will start coming down. So think about what the majority is doing and you must be doing something different. Socrates says, if you want to be wrong, then follow the masses, right? But why is that you watch what everybody's watching? So same thing as CNBC. Why is that you, you follow where, what everybody's following? Why is that you take heed of what everybody is taking heed of, right? Think about it. How many people do you know? call this move after the 20% decline on the S&P. How many people do you know? None. None. Why? Because only very small group of people knew this was going to happen and they profited. 90, 90 some percent of people was not able to participate in it, right? Majority of players right majority of market participants thought that this was the start of market crash and majority of that same market participant probably different crew probably they got wiped out already by now this is a different crew now because the market recycles investors and traders that's how it funds that top 10 percent that's how the market continues to move higher in 2016 
majority of market participants thought that crash was going to happen. It didn't. Majority of market participants thought the crash was going to happen in 2000, late 2018, early 2019. That didn't happen. And majority of market participants are have lost majority of their money just in the last three, four months shorting this market. Or they're still in cash after losing a lot of money, you know, uh, uh, stopping out or closing out their positions with loss. And then the opportunity cost. Remember we talked about this before? You're essentially losing double because you close out your positions with loss and then you missed out on the opportunity. You're losing double. That's how you lose double because the op you got to take in the opportunity cost. You missed out on the opportunity and there's no way you're going to start. If you close out all your positions down here, there's no way you're going to start like, you know what I'm saying? Like start fully going along here after 25% run because if this thing start pulling back, well, now, now you're losing double. That's how you lose double. But anyhow, <clears throat> excuse me. I get a little bit like spring allergies here, here in Minneapolis. And so my voice is a little bit husky or deeper today. Uh, that's that's kind of why. But, uh, oh, I have a little bit of announcement. I forgot to tell you guys that next week, next week, there will be no market update. There will be no market update next week. I'll be traveling next week. And so um, there will be no market update. So this will be the last market update video um, for the April. We'll come back. We'll, we'll take a rest. We'll take a break next week. We'll come back first week or first weekend of May, the 3rd of May. And then we'll kind of, you know, we'll investigate what the market has done next, you know, uh, throughout the uh, next week and the week after, right? So this will be the last market update for the for the month of April. So keep that in mind. I'll be traveling next weekend. So uh, let's go to here again. I'm recording this intraday and market has been open for two hours as I record this video. Uh, let's uh, it has this gap has been filled. Let's investigate that. Let's go to hourly chart. To be precise, this is actually 65 minute chart. But you can see the gap remains open as of now. It, looking at things like a short-term perspective, we want this gap to be open, right? So when, when, when they fail to fill the majority of the gap, like, you know what I mean? Like, they, you know, you can see the bears came down and then fill this much gap, right? But not filling it completely. That's actually a bullish signal, especially where I mean, obviously we're looking at 65 minute charts. So we're looking at kind of a micro term. So in a micro term sense, basically looking at throughout the this day and maybe early, you know, next week or Monday, uh, this if we can keep this gap open by the end of today, that would give favors the bulls going into early next week in the intraday. Again, this is 65 minute chart. So. But if this does get filled, that also is gonna give you some support because that you know a lot of times when the gap gets filled, it does act as instant either resistance or support, right? Remember this, this gap, there's a gap down here. Think about that. That gap got filled. What happened? It became instant resistance. That's how we saw this pullback, right? Again, that was short term though, because we're analyzing short term. So there was a short term resistance, but market brought right back up here. Market brought it right back up. Same thing happened here. You see this this uh, bullish gap up. That gap was filled on this day, and then what happened next day? We gapped up. So short term, we did see that support. We got right back up, and we're pulling back, and we're back here now. So if we if this gap remains open, there's, I think, more uh, move for this to continue higher, right? Um, and uh, it, it would be better for the bulls if we can, you know, we keep that gap open. But even if it gets filled, you know, that's probably going to act as support as well. But if, if the bulls want to kind of bring it up back to its highs, we probably want this thing to be open and then possibly go for the next or go for that recent highs here, 291-ish. But if we fill it, there's probably a chance we might get back up again, but we're not sure how much it can go higher before pulling back. But 
Um, you can see we've got plenty of gaps that has not been filled. And there's probably a lot of people betting on the fact that, you know, um, there since there's a lot of gaps down there, you know, maybe it's going to come back down to fill it. It's not always a case. I mean, I think sooner or later we're going to see something I've been talking about that, you know, I think we're going to see about 5 to 7% correction sooner or later. I'm not sure exactly where. Nobody does. And so, I mean, we may see it around here. We may see it around all-time high at 293. Or we may see it at 300. We've been tracking this level as well. So sooner or later, we're going to see about 5 to 7, maybe 8% corrections. And uh, when that happens, what's going to happen is um, a lot of people who kind of missed out on this opportunity and they're going to be really, really exhausting just kind of watching this thing keep going higher. So what ha what's going to happen is, you know, a lot of CNBC and all these different people, right, all these different major publications or media sources, they're going to start like jumping on the bullish case. And then everyone's going to be just like, just like, oh my God, these people, you know, a lot of bears going to maybe turn bullish and a lot of cash people, they just can't wait any longer. And then they start jumping in because they feel like, you know what, this thing probably never, ever going to correct, right? That's where we're going to see some like, you know, something like steeper pullback. And then it's going to create a, create a massive panic. And then a lot of people who's been like dead for a while, a lot of these bears, right? Who's been calling for a major, major crash, who's been dead for like a month or something like that they're gonna come back and say aha yeah man yeah bro we're gonna see some shenanigan crash bros we're gonna see this massive inverted head and shoulder that's what i'm talking about and then they're gonna kind of restart up their big short right quote unquote big short and uh and then it's and a lot of people start tweeting like yeah man this could be 2008 all over again and the uh, market is probably gonna maybe shake some people loud and then continue higher. So that's kind of like what I'm thinking, but I don't know exactly what point is gonna happen, but I think, you know, something like seven, you know, five to 7% correction or four to seven, four to 8%, something like that is probably gonna happen between 300 and in this vicinity now at 290, somewhere here, right? somewhere here that's what i think is gonna happen sometimes market does perform miracles like unthinkable right is there a possibility this market just keeps on going higher maybe three to three ten in this fashion where like you know what i'm saying like just grind 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 yeah i mean if you go back uh if you study um i think 19 uh, let's see here, guys. Yeah, right here. If you study 1994, um, it happened. That thing went for like a year. For like a year, it nev it 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 sell it didn't see like five percent correction. It like three percent correction. And if I can just throw in like 20 MA, right? 20 MA. Uh, where is my 20 man? I'm gonna do 20. Right. I'm gonna make it blue, right? That's 20 MA, okay, 20 MA. And this thing just kept going. Never see 4%, 5% corrections. And it did that pretty much entire year, starting December, December. Remember the rally happened for us in late December? Pretty much all throughout like all the way until like another December here. This is December, you see. And then I think that's when we saw like like 4% corrections. And these were like just mid, like 2 3%. So sometimes market, you know, is able to uh, do some unimaginable things. See, if I put 2% now with 20 MA, you can see we've kind of been tracking with that as well. But that's very rare. I wouldn't bat on that. But if that happens, great, because I still have many, many longs I've been accumulating since early 2016. But I think it's likely we're going to see some 5-7% corrections, kind of shake some people out. There's going to be a lot of people kind of jumping in. Like, you know, the bear's going to maybe turn bullish. You know, a lot of cash people going to start kind of wanting to get back in. And then we're probably going to see, I'm more leaning towards having seen, or I think high probability of seeing about 
uh, five to seven percent correction, maybe eight at the worst case scenario in this vicinity. Um, that's kind of what I'm forecasting here. If we're looking at a more short term, you know, um, we got that rising wedge, right? We got the prior resistance acting as new support here. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. We got that gap still open. So that's going to provide some support. Um, could we come back in? Yeah, sure. But who cares about short term movement? Whatever, right? Now, that's the, again, you guys know that I'm a position trader, a long term investor. I really don't care if it continues to grind higher. Great. If it comes back, great. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like that short, I, I'm not concerned. You know what I mean? I'm not really concerned about short term shenanigans. As long as we get into intermediate term uptrend, which I believe is going to have throughout this year and next year, and we already saw 25% run on the S&P, and it was a, such a smooth run, guys, and I thoroughly enjoyed this. So some shenanigan up here, maybe some volatility coming back to 283, that's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. And a lot of people get always scared about everything. You know what I mean? They live their life. They... You know, they're scared about we could see another 1% down, 2% down. That's given. We're going to have some shenanigans. I mean, we saw that. We saw this. You know what I mean? But we're holding this so far. So let's see if that holds or not. We got that little gap there. If this thing does fall back, we have that support there. Otherwise, probably going to kind of retest this level. I'm going to do that right there. There's our, There's that island reversal and that's a pretty size we'll give a little tiny gap here also 280 so 284 280 and we got 50 ma hovering that area so that level if this thing does come down next week you know uh 284 280 is gonna be acting as pretty solid support there otherwise this thing could very well keep grinding higher we got like i think this gap probably was filled yesterday no nah, we got a little bit open Got that small tiny gap still open there, right? And with that little gap from here, so we got those two gaps to fill, and that's that all time high level at 293. So you may continue to grind higher to, to fill these gaps as well. Let's go to Diamond. Uh, Diamond holding up here. We got that, um, you know, that symmetrical triangle pattern we broke out. We got that gap. We got gap here. We got gap there. We got gap here. A lot of gaps here. Those levels are going to act as some support if we do see. Uh, price slide and this is essentially a bullish set on the long term right breakout or floating around after this consolidation that's a, that has a higher probability of continuing either floating around or any kind of pullback should act as support before going back up here we got a little tiny gap there and uh, this is the kind of level to watch if this thing continues higher and uh, we'll kind of continue to watch that. Let's go to NASDAQ. NASDAQ made a new all-time high. I mean, the Qs I did. I don't think NASDAQ, the cash market did, uh, but the Qs did. Yep, the uh, the actual NASDAQ index is not there yet. But the Qs did, um, and uh, we're just kind of poked this head up here and just hanging around in that vicinity. Pretty sizable gap at 188, 187 area is a level 50 MA is hoovering that area. If this thing does pull back 181, 177, you know, 175, the worst case scenario, probably should act as pretty solid support area. We got that 100, 200 there and 50 there. Let's continue with the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 failing here at this level. A little bit of gap here. We got 50, you know, the small cap's been kind of lagging a little bit, but year to day, 16%. But we're not anywhere near all time high because this thing did fall or fell so much more steeper than other indices. So we're just lagging a little bit. I think sooner or later the small caps are going to catch up. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing actually. If, if we if we do see other indices like the large cap indices, Spider and Diamond, the Qs, if they start to fall, I I I wouldn't surprise to see the Russell 2000 actually making new lows just to create a little bit of panic. And if we do see a new low on the Russell 2000, right, lower low, because a lot of people probably place their stuff just below it. You know, a lot of times what they do is they look at this. Again, this is why I don't place my trade based on this short term consolidation setups, right? I, I, I was I was going long down here, so I didn't go long on this breakout. I actually did buy the dip here on the Russell 2000 IWM and Tina. No, Tina, I bought it. 
down here. But T9 is triple shares. Um, but I didn't I didn't buy it on breakout. I hate breakout plays, and I don't think anybody should play it that way. So a lot of people probably did play the breakout plays, and then they're gonna place their stuff here or something, you know, and then market might come down and get that. And if that's the case, uh, if we make new low, that I think that's the buying point. I said I think that's the buy. I think that's the level to buy that dip. Um, you know that that's the psychological level to buy the dip. That's a great setup for psychological setup, psychological long setup. Because you know what I mean. Like everybody's looking for that uh, pattern, and then you know uh, sometimes it plays out, sometimes it doesn't. Let's say if it doesn't. Uh, it makes new low, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it because I feel like the Russell 2000 is kind of going for that. Like, oh man, looks like a lot of people chase this, place their stuff just below it. Let's go get that, and then finally get up. So let's kind of see if that happens. Semis just thrived. Semis thrive. Welcome to the new all-time highs level. Now, I mean, we're well above that level, and people <laughs> they're still saying. This is a blow off top action. Go and back and look at 2016 action. Go and look at 2016, what it did after it made you all time highs, right? Doesn't mean it's gonna play out just like 2016 and 17. We may very well fall back in, but remember the word that I use a lot is a cultivation. Cultivate, that's a cultivation of higher highs. So it is pulling back to cultivate higher low before going lower. So if this thing falls pretty steep, maybe 50 MA to 200 SMA, that's the level to buy somewhere in that vicinity. Do a little bit of Fibonacci here and see that 50% may become somewhere in that vicinity, which is coinciding with that 200 there, some gap areas. This is a level to buy. If if we do see this thing coming down somewhere 100, 100, 200, 3, maybe not. I mean, market sometimes, you know, many times market is not gonna give you all clear signal for entry, the perfect entry level where everybody can see that obvious level, so you can just buy that level perfectly. You know what I'm saying? Market many times are not gonna give you that. I mean, look at these little pullbacks. A lot of people are looking for more steeper pullback, and market ain't gonna give you that. And then we just had new all-time high. A lot of people missed out. A lot of people are short this, thinking that this probably is that crash, that head and shoulder formation. This is a neckline. A lot of people short and this thing went straight back up. Think about, look about all this shenanigan just for a year or a year and a half of just coiling around and then finally broke down. And so you think that, well, there's a topping pattern, right? That's a distribution distribution phase, right? And then so now this is the start of a bear market. And you know what market says? Uh-uh, right? That's what everybody's thinking. Market says, so now this thing takes just a quarter, one, three months and just completely wipe out all these bear thesis people out there. Let's go to banks. Banks are doing pretty well, right? Because obviously we kind of threw this inverted head and shoulders here, made a new low, like here, like, like this. You see this? That's something, we could see something like that on the Russell 2000, boom, boom, right? This is lows, right? And then this making new low, right, even lower than this low right here, and then reverses. We may see something like this on the Russell 2000, on the Russell 2000, right? And then we had pretty sizable gap, we're holding up, we're holding up right now. But looking at more of an intermediate term perspective on the banks though, you can see we're still in the vicinity of lower highs and lower lows. So we, intermediate term, I have to still categorize as bearish, in, in, in as far as a trend is concerned. But I think what the what the banks is gonna do is that we're gonna come up, you know, maybe make that eco highs, kind of pull back again, and then and then and then get into an uptrend. Right? We may pull back down first and we retest this gap area or something like that, or retest this neckline, right? A lot of times this is a neckline, right? We poke his head up, sometimes like to retest it, and then maybe fill the gap, you know, and then get up something like that but for now it's holding up well here like, i'll give you one last look in spider as i cl as i close this video uh market should be open yeah so market should be open for another what three four four hours and a half four hours and 20 minutes as i close this video 
So keep that in mind. Well, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Again, next week, there will be no market update video. So we'll take a break and we'll resume on the first weekend of May. So um, yeah, good luck trading next week. Have a good weekend.